Hey guys, it's uh, Shubham here from Food Genics, and hope you all are doing absolutely well and had a fantastic Gate 2021 season. Uh, you guys all have successfully faced Gate 2021, and we at Food Genics family consider you all as absolute winners. Food Genics is finally here, the first across the nation to release the answer key and the predictions and a predictive analysis of the food technology that is your XCG or your XLU section from this year's gate examination and we are here with the most probable solutions to the questions in the food technology paper. This time the paper had many surprises with less amount of numerical based questions, uh, less amount of NATs and more amount of MSQs. So gate we believe that GATE provided a very tough battleground to the techies of our nation. And uh, we all know that you ha all have been waiting for uh, the solutions and the keys with bated breath uh, to know how many runs you made on the leaderboard and how many wickets you lost. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's get to the mission right now. Okay, uh, so before we start, a uh, uh, small disclaimer is that uh, this year the question numbers, uh, especially question 1 to 9, their marks distribution uh, had been shuffled. So uh, it might be the case that uh, our numbers and our sequences might not match with yours. Uh, so please check your answers, re-verify uh, your answers according to uh, your own uh, response sheet uh, and your own sequence. So here goes. So the first question that came this year was based on the starch hydrolysis concept. Uh, which one of the following enzymes um, sequentially releases maltose from starch? So the answer to this would be beta amylase enzyme. It acts on the second last carbon of starch, the second last carbon of starch uh, from the non-reducing end of the molecule if you are talking about the other uh, uh, options mentioned here uh, the alpha amylase enzyme breaks the 1 4 links in the the starch molecules to finally get what we call low molecular weight dextrins low molecular weight uh, dextrins the other two enzymes that is your option 1 and option 4 they are both uh, what we call as uh, the debranching enzymes, glucoamylase and polyulinase. Uh, so, glucoamylase helps in the formation of glucose uh, and it's quite frequently uh, used in uh, production of glucose syrup. The polyulinase uh, acts on the alpha 1 to 6 linkages of the starch and uh, it's basically what is known in the industry as your debranching enzymes. Next question uh, that is your. Uh, what is a like name of the bittering agent in grapefruit which is formed after juice extraction under acidic conditions so if we go by the law of elimination uh, the first option that is theobromine is a primary bitter tasting alkaloid it is it's uh, it's an alkaloid which is generally found in your cocoa uh, then you find it in your chocolates uh, so it contains about 3% of theobromine chocolates. Uh, secondly, coming to your isohumulone, uh, they are chemical compounds that you know like contribute to the bitter taste in beer. So, the hops which are used for flavoring in beer that contains isohumulone. So, this is the first two options are eliminated, they are not your answers. Third is your quinine, which is again not uh, like not majorly found in your grapefruits. Coming to the limonene. Limonin is uh, uh, one of the primary compounds. Other than that, you also find compounds called naringin. It's they are basically glycosidic uh, flavonone, glycosidic flavonone, and they are commonly found in grapefruits. The third question was uh, I consider it to be one of the tricky ones. So, uh, which of which of these following microorganisms is not a causative agent for foodborne diseases. 
so if we see the first um, organism that is your uh, campylobacter jejuni it's most often spread by you know like poultry undercooked poultry uh, this uh, is this microorganism spreads through that pathway the second one is your uh, clostridium perfringens which is again found in raw meat and poultry also in your uh, uh, like intestinal organs of the poultry animals which if consumed in a raw manner or a uncooked manner it can cause food poisoning thirdly is your norovirus uh, which is again a leading cause of food borne illness in the united states almost 60% poisoning is done in in this manner finally which is not a causative agent so all these first three options are they are causative agents so by law of elimination this would be and also for your information this particular organism causes something called a lime disease which is mainly uh, it, it's spread by ticks uh, it's 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 a kind of an insect uh, so it's not a food borne disease so the fourth question was based on the technology of supercritical fluid extraction so supercritical fluid extraction is basically a technology which applies pressure and temperature above uh, the critical uh, point of a compound or a mixture or a critical point as you call uh, critical temperature now carbon dioxide is the most commonly used supercritical fluid uh, and also it is used in combination with co extraction solvents like ethanol and methanol uh, these are the most common option this was an mc msq question so multiple answers were correct so the fourth and the third options are the most probable ones in the question the first option is also correct because water is quite commonly used as an extraction solvent also it's used in something called subcritical extraction processes um done in case of flavors uh, and flavoring compounds volatile compounds and spices and tea so 1 3 4 correct options the second one is a tricky one uh, it is not a direct solvent which is used for supercritical fluid extraction it is generally used for liquid liquid solvent extraction processes please note this so uh, and also recently it has been shown that it's not a green solvent it's a toxic solvent so it is sometimes used for decaffeination processes in tea and coffee but nowadays it's not being used so this is not a correct option so 1 3 4 is your correct one the fifth question uh, was uh, choose the correct pair of pigment and their corresponding color in given plant product so the first question is obviously it, uh, it is an obvious answer that is carotene or your beta carotenoids which is uh, you know like very commonly found in your uh, orange or yellowish um vegetables like carrots and pumpkins etc so it's also found in your red red bell peppers or your red capsicums as we call it uh, here so it's commonly found there so it's a correct option the second one your flavanols uh, although it is found in certain content as we uh, got it through some research papers but uh, it's not the orange color that is being given in cauliflower but more of your whitish uh, or uh, light yellowish creamish tinge which is given by the flavanols the third is your betanin so betanin is a major reason for your purple bluish purple or reddish color in your cact red uh, in your cactus pear fruit about 70 to 95% of its coloration is contributed by the betanin and better cyanin is also a major product in this uh, particular fruit uh, so it is also correct option the there is a slight ambiguity re related to the fourth option since uh, lycopene is uh, though it is reported in red beets uh but still it is not a very significant contributor to the red coloration so this option might or might not be correct so this is a confusion but this 1 and 3 are absolute definite answers okay so the sixth question is basically a food engineering based question uh, where you had to choose the correct pair of governing law and their corresponding applications so the first question uh, the first option is your hagen poisson law which is a very simple one that is del p equal to uh, 8 mu l 
q divided by the pi r to the power 4 so this is the basic expression of the law so this is uh, a correct option the second is uh, saying that raoult's law is related with size reduction which is not a correct option as raoult's uh, size reduction laws are basically like kick's law and rittinger's law and bond's law etc and raoult's law is basically dealing with your uh, partial pressure and uh, mole fraction related uh, expression so basically its uh, relation is like that partial pressure of a particular uh, solution is uh, equal to your mole fraction of the solute into the total pressure of the medium of the solvent so this is what raoult's law denotes so this is not a correct representation the third option is again a correct one as stephen boltzmann law states that uh, your uh, j is equal to sigma into temperature fourth power to the temperature so this is basically a direct representation of your radiation heat transfer that is your j unit so this is a correct option the fourth one that is your written just uh, written just law it is again it is not a correct representation as written just law is a size reduction law while your vapor pressure can somehow be related to your uh, raoult's law and also coming to this third option the the uh, stephen boltzmann law why it is a correct option because the this law is stating that the power radiated from a black body is directly proportional to the fourth power of the temperature so again re uh, instate reinstating the fact that the the first and the third options are the correct one uh, the seventh question was dealing with uh, another part of your momentum transfer chapter coming from the food engineering section that which is the co the correct most representation of your reynolds number so reynolds number is basically denoted using this particular expression that is your uh, nre equal to rho that is your density into your diameter into your velocity divided by your mu so mu here in this particular expression stands as the dynamic viscosity so the third option that is presented here is exactly of this particular representation so the third option is correct now if we change this expression a bit uh, if we denote it in this format that uh, d in nre n r e equal to d into v by mu by rho so this mu by rho expression is standing for your kinematic viscosity as we call it so this first expression is basically your v into d divided by mu by rho where this is your kinematic viscosity so the first and the third options are the correct most representation of your reynolds number the eighth question is uh, dealing with which of the following is not a fermented food product now this might have confused you but to be honest like vinegar is a fermented food product which is produced using your commonly known as acetic acid fermentation uh, acetobacter acetai organism tempeh is another fermented product now tofu is not a fermented product it is uh, directly obtained through coagulation processes or isoelectric precipitation processes from your soy milk uh, soy milk proteins so this is not a fermented product and on the other hand sauerkraut is again a fermented product which is obtained from your cabbages so your third option is the correct one the ninth question is which one of the following enzymes is involved in proteolysis of casein in uh, cheese now plasmin is a very commonly found in researches that it is being very much used uh, and plasmin activity is very desirable for flavor and texture development during your ripening or aging stages of your cheese uh, during your cheese production so this is the correct option from here 
the the cathepsin enzyme if you have been confused by that the cathepsin enzyme uh, its role in the the proteolysis part in rennet coagulated cheeses is very unclear and even if it's there its presence is very less in minute quantities and the other two uh, the other two enzymes are not related to your cheese production or your proteolysis part of your cheese aging so this is the correct option we are predicting that this would be the accurate one finally ending it uh, with uh, your uh, the the 10th question that is your the protein efficiency ratio so the first option that is presented here that is your ratio of essential and non essential amino acids it's not the correct representation the second option that is your percentage of absorbed nitrogen retained in the body uh is again not the per ratio the per is basically the fourth option that is the weight gain in body mass per gram of protein intake uh and the second option is basically uh the digestibility as we call it the common term so this is not per and third option that is percent in vitro digestibility is again a uh, representation of your digestibility factor or how well the proteolytic enzymes in your body acts on the protein and helps metabolism of protein so the se first second third options are not the correct representations a fourth would be the correct one the further 12 uh, questions from this particular paper will be discussed in following videos of uh, which uh, the, you'll find the links in the description do not forget to follow us on all our social media handles uh and also before you leave do not forget to share like and subscribe to our youtube channel and do tap the bell icon for further notifications from foodgenics signing off have a good day